five or six best things that ever happened to me was when my wife said, I do, and the doctor said, it's a girl. <laughs> the next doctor said, it's a girl. The next doctor said, it's a boy. When they brought my little adopted girl around uh, into the room in China and we saw her, and then when the Buckeyes won the national championship in 2002. <laughs> I've been endorsed by the Ohio Pro-Life Action Group and the CCV Action Pact for this race. I'm not a career politician. My life has been about changing the world one life at a time through ministry. My life has not been about political posturing, and it has not been about a series of strategic maneuvers to get where I am today. I am a conservative, both fiscally and socially. And if you're a Republican first and a conservative second, then what I'm getting ready to say may not appeal, but I won't apologize for my strongly held values. I'm not going to discuss my fiscal conservatism for the sake of time. I'd like to talk with you about that later. But right now, I'm going to answer the arguments of those who stand with NARAL and the ACLU against the heartbeat bill, the reason that I'm running this race. The first thing that I've heard is that this is bad legislation. And here's what I say to that. Fix it. They don't want to fix it. I tell young people this. You make time to do the things you want to do. So I say to this, this to the, the state senators there in Columbus. Stop spinning and grow a spine. Do something for life. My opponent, thank you. My opponent has said that she is, has concerns about an abortion doctor determining the heartbeat. I don't even know what that means. So I say this. So what? So what if we save all those children whose heartbeat's been detected by the hospitals and the clinics in the fifth and sixth weeks of the pregnancy? Maybe Planned Parenthood won't detect them until week eight, nine, or ten. But then we get to expose the discrepancy and expose them for who they really are, the frauds that they are, and then we win again. That's no reason to stall this bill. Argument number three, we don't have the millions of dollars in this Ohio economy to spend on defending the constitutionality of the bill. I have three things to say to that. Stop the ridiculous and frivolous spending that we spend on other things. Amen. Thank you. Amen. True. The other thing I say is pass it. And I'll personally raise all the money. We'll raise it very fast for life. The last thing about that argument, I would say this. When I was a young man, I contracted a blood illness, aplastic anemia. I spent the better part of two years in a hospital bed in Columbus. One time, the, the Columbus Children Hospital sent my parents a bill for $250,000. My dad was in the military. He didn't look at that and say, ah, we can't afford that. Sorry about your luck, son. You're going to have to die. No, you make, you make efforts to do the right thing for those you love for life. And the last thing, the last argument, I've heard this. It's not the right time. We may not have the numbers on the Supreme Court. Ladies and gentlemen, it's always the right time to do the right thing. Martin Luther King Jr., in his letter from the Birmingham jail, wrote an appeal to eight white pastors that had written him and said this, your work for racial injustice is unwise and untimely. Sounds like my opposition. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time that we hold our representatives accountable for their compromise. Other issues do matter. But is there any other one more important than this? And I'll leave by saying this. When you're dealing with politicians, I say this. Don't listen to what they say. Watch what they do. I need your endorsement. Thank you.